Uh, what's going on guys? So this is part 6 of the V8 S10 swap. So today we don't really have anything engine related. Because that's still done on the block. Uh, today we are installing some drop spindles and 4 inch blocks for the back. Okay, so... I mean, that's how the truck is right now. I'll add some pictures so you can see uh, how it is better. Alright, so let's get started with the install today. So I'm going to jack up the truck, put on jack stands. Then I'll be back. Alright guys, so I got the the truck up on jack stands now. I'm gonna start removing all the wheels. And um, yeah, keep in mind guys, this isn't something you have to do if you're gonna swap a 350 in your truck or a V8. Just something I wanted to do because it'll look better. But yeah. All right, so let me, I'm gonna start the front first, put the spindles on, then I'll do the blocks in the back. So I'll take off this tire and then we'll get started with the actual install. Alright guys, so the wheel, the front wheel is out, so the first thing we got to do is remove the tie rod right here. So, uh, there's a cotter pin, cotter pin here, so I'm going to take that out, then get the nut out. Then, I'll remove the tie rod, then you move on to the, you got to take out the dust shield, so we could remove the bearings and get the whole hub assembly out, and uh, as well as the brake caliber. Uh, so let me remove the tie rod and I'll be right back. Alright, so the tie rod is out, so basically what you do, you take out the cotter pin at the top, then you have a 20 millimeter nut, and you take that out, and then just pretty much hammer the, the top of the bolt from the, from the tie rod, and it'll fall down basically, and yeah, that's it. So now, you want to take out the, the brake caliper, so you have two Allen head bolts right here. And right here, so they unscrew like from the back. So we take those out, and then we can hang the brake caliper up to the side. You want to make sure you don't hang it from the brake line because you don't want any pressure on that. So uh, let's. I'm gonna take that out, and then I'll be back. All right, so I got the brake caliper hanging to the side here. I'm just gotta put a ratchet strap there. So you got the the Allen head bolts right here. You need a uh, 3 8 uh, uh, Allen bit so you could take the both of these out they come out to the back and then you could just slide the, the caliber out so after you do that you want to get a flathead screwdriver and remove this little dust shield off it just pops off like that and then we can get the, the other copper pin in there and the, and the nut so we could slide all this hub assembly out so I'll get this cover off and then I'll be right back. Alright, so the dust shield comes off pretty fairly easy and just get off flat head. Put it under, hammer it a little bit, not too hard to bend it, but just a little bit and it'll come off. And so now you got this other uh, copper pin right there. So we're gonna get that out. Then we could slide this nut off of here. Then we could get the the bearings and the whole assembly off. And so let me take the nut and I'll be right back. Alright, so after you get the nut out, check that out right here. The the bearing which will slide out. That goes right here in the front. So now you can just pretty much slide this whole assembly right out. So I'm gonna go do that. And then we're gonna take off the this dust shield right here. And then the knuckle's almost ready to come out. And the spindle. Alright, so I got that whole brake rotor and the hub assembly out. So we're pretty much left with this now. So there's like one, two, like four bolts to get this dust shield off. So once we get that off, we we're pretty much set to take out the spindle. So all right, then I'll take off the the dust shield and then I'll be right back. Alright guys, so I took out the, the dust shield off now, I put it, I just set it down right over there. 
Uh, one thing to keep in mind, you only have to take out three, three bolts. This two, uh, that's two little ones that go on the right, and then a longer one that goes that would be right here, and then the other two, then the little one, and then another little one down there. There's one that has like a nut on it on this side. That one you don't have to take out. It'll come out with the actual dust shield assembly, so do keep that in mind. Alright, so I got a jack right under the, the control arms here. So when I take out the spindle, it won't like open up too much. So yeah. So now just wait. there's a nut right there and one on the top. So we take out those two and then the spindle will pretty much be ready to to remove basically. And so I'm gonna do that and then I'll be right back. Alright guys, so after you take out the cotter pins for the for the for the spindle nuts right here and at the top, you're gonna wanna not take out the, the nut all the way out and just like leave it in a little bit. And then you're gonna hammer pretty much at the side right here of the spindle at the top and the bottom until it gets loose from the control arms so I got the top one loose but I haven't been able to get the bottom one so I sprayed some liquid printer on it and I'll wait and then I'll do a little a little bit later so I'm gonna actually move on and start um, doing the back and put in the, the drop blocks so yeah I'm uh, I'll do that while this soaks in like liquid penetrant. Alright, so we're at the back axle here. So now what you're going to want to do, you're going to go to your your axle U-bolts, which are pretty much those right there. And you have four nuts for those, two on that side and two on this side. You can't really see them there, but yeah. So. So you basically just take out these two nuts and then the two on the other side and you can leave the shock uh, mounted as a matter. So after that, then you do that for both sides, then we're going to raise the axle and then put the drop the blocks in. Alright, so I'm going to take the the U-bolts out and then we'll get back to it. Okay, so I actually suggest you take out the back wheels as well because it'll make your job a whole lot easier trying to get those nuts out of there. and. All right, so for the for the actual uh, the U bolt nuts, it's a seven eighth socket. So then, if you have a, a deep one, it'll be a lot better because I'm using a short one and it won't the bolt it extends out further back, so it can't really go all the way in, but it still works, I guess. So yeah, let me get those those U bolts out, and I'll be right. Alright guys, so I got the the U-bolts out of the axle on both sides. So now the axle is pretty much free from the leaf springs. Boom. Alright, so now what we're gonna wanna do is put the your jack right on the on the differential there. So you can raise up the axle a little bit. So you could put in your your blocks right here. So I'm going to raise the axle and then I'll get back to you with the block. Alright guys, so I got the, the axle lifted up a little bit. So now I'll put the block in on the driver's side. And now I'm going to put it in on the passenger side. So I wanted to let you guys know this is an imperative step. So if you notice, one, the top part of the block that has like the little nipple is angled. It has an angle, it's not flat at the top. So you want to put the tall part of the block to the back of the bed and the, the shorter part to the front of the cab. So basically, this part goes back, the tall part goes back, and the, and the, and the short part goes front. And you're just going to line up the bottom of the, of the block with the nipple on the on the leaf springs there since this has a hole on the bottom too 
and then after that you're gonna put your U-bolts back on and that's pretty much it for the back so I'll put this block in, I'll put the U-bolts in and I'll get back to you guys alright guys so I got the all the U-bolts torqued down now uh, let me get a light here uh, so I got the the U-bolts torqued down the blocks are in place on both sides So you're going to want to torque the, the U-bolts down to 80 foot-pounds. I did them in intervals, first 25, then 50, then 80. And then once you do that, then that's pretty much it for the back. Um, I got the, I got double exhaust tips in the back. So, uh, I'm still seeing if my, I might have some some issues because the rear differential is pretty close I don't know if you can really see it but it's pretty close to the other exhaust pipe over there so I'll have to see about that tomorrow uh, it's pretty late right now so I'm calling it a day for now but yeah uh, I'll continue the video tomorrow when it's light out again and we can do the front then finally set it down on the floor and see how it looks. Alright guys, so it's the next day now. And uh, we had finished the back. So now in terms of the front, like I had said, you want to loosen both of the control arm nuts in the bottom and top and I'll still leave them on the actual bolt. So you're going to hammer right here on the spindle and on the bottom and two. It'll like like release in a way and you'll see how it separates like that so once that happens on the top and bottom then you can then you put a jack underneath the control arm and then take out the spindle and replace it for the for the lowering spindle so I managed to get the passenger side out which took quite a bit of effort so I got the jack underneath the lower control arm then it's all out so now I'm gonna put the other one in and put the gasket back on and all that and all so i'm gonna go ahead and do that and then all right so i managed to get the driver's side spindle out and the uh, the passenger is already pretty much built back up again so once you get it out it's pretty much just put the other one in the same exact way the the old ones came out so this is the old one so now I'm gonna get the new one, put it back in there, and finish building it back up again, and then I'll be right back with you guys. All right, so both of the the front, the driver, and passenger side are done. I actually ended up replacing one of my outer tie rods because the boat. Pretty much broke off, I guess you could say. But yeah, anyway, they're both good now. So I'm gonna mount up the rear tires, and then the front. Then check if it's like aligned properly. And then yeah, we're almost pretty much done. I mean, I got the. I had finished up the truck already. I like I was riding it for for a while, and the front was still like. I inch taller than the back like it wasn't leveled completely didn't really like how it looked so I actually bought some lowering springs and took off the old springs that's one of them the other one's over here but yeah, so I, I replaced the springs and it ended up being that three of my four ball joints were shot so I'm in the process of replacing those which is honestly harder than it should be but uh, so I got this one right here replaced you can't really see that but yeah right, so that one's replaced the top one in the passenger side because it had like the rivets in it so it wasn't it didn't have like actual bolts on it <laughs> like it does right now so I actually had to cut up the rivets and then drill them out so it took quite a while, so I got to do the other side and both bottom ones. 
I actually ended up having to replace the tie rod on the well actually on both sides like the both outer tie rods so yeah actually the springs I didn't even have to use a spring compressor and it was fairly simple you can sort of see them right there uh, but yeah. they weren't too difficult I didn't even have to use like spring compressors or anything Oh yeah, so I'm gonna start um, getting the bottom tie rod out and just go from there and update you guys. Alright, so I'm in the process of getting the driver's side upper ball joint out. So I already grinded up the heads of like all the rivets. And I'm starting to like drill drill out the, the rivets. So I started doing one drill ran out of battery, so I gotta charge that up. And on the passenger side upper ball joint I noticed that the I had to take it off again because the the actual like rubber boot that, that was on there was actually broken so it wasn't even holding like the grease in so I'm gonna have to replace that again but yeah I'm gonna get these rivets out as soon as the drill is charged back up get that out so I just actually replace one <laughs> Okay, so I finished getting the upper ball joint out. Then I'm not actually gonna put the other one in yet because I I messaged the seller from Amazon of the ball joints to see like if I could get a replacement sound out or something. So I'm gonna wait for that and then I'll see what's up with that. And then if anything, I'll install it if they're gonna send another one. Unless I gotta return it, but yeah. That's that, at least. Okay, so the the seller on Amazon with the ball joints uh, emailed me back saying saying he's gonna send me a replacement out. So I went ahead and installed the on the driver's side the upper ball joint. So I'd have to wait on the mail for the for the passenger side one. So I guess I'm gonna wait till that one gets here, and then I'll. I'll start doing the bottom ball joints, so I'd have to like go rent the tool or whatever and do those. So once that happens, I'll be back. And so I got the passenger side all finished already, lower ball joints changed as well as the upper and everything is torqued back up and assembled. So now I just got the the lower ball joint on the driver's side out and yeah so I'm just gonna set, uh, build everything all of this back up and then finish the video because it's gone long enough so let me get this assembled again and then I'll get back to you before before I lower the truck again alright guys so I'm done with the S10 it looks a bit more level now uh, it's not in uh, leveled ground right now so it might look a, li a bit taller in the front still, but when it's like flat, it's it's pretty leveled. So yeah, that's that for this episode. I'll be making another episode pretty soon. So yeah.